Hi and welcome back, I'm Ellie and I promised you five more recipes so let's jump straight to them. I will link the first part of the video above here. Back in the crock pot department, I still have this large piece of pork that I need to cook and I'm just gonna put it in the, in the crock pot to make um, like pulled porkish kind of thing. And I'm gonna make a rub from some paprika, ground coriander, garlic, onion, pepper, uh, cayenne pepper, ground cumin, and smoked paprika. I will cover it generously with salt and coat it with a layer of mustard so it will hold our seasoning better. I'm making this after I made the broth so I didn't wash my crock pot because life's too short. We don't need to add any liquid to this but I'm adding around half a cup of our potato stew. Together with the juices from the meat this will create like a thick gravy that you can use to season other dishes. I will leave this overnight and cook it on low for 10 hours. This is after 4 hours and you can see that it's still not quite where we want it to be. We're here the next day and things are looking much better. Look at this. I still have a lot of things left so I'm thinking Make some rice porridge from the leftover rice, top it off with some of that pork. I'm starting the porridge by frying some onion in a hot pan with a pinch of salt. You will want to fry it until it becomes golden brown. I chopped four cloves of garlic and grated one large carrot. And when you can see that the onions have been cooked, you can add your carrots and garlic until the carrots melt down and you can start smelling the garlic. Season this with salt and pepper and go ahead and add your leftover rice. The rice will be quite lumpy from the fridge but just go ahead and break it down with your spoon a little bit and add your chicken broth if you have it or I will in this case I will just add water. The ratio between rice and water will be different for everybody. It depends how thick or liquid you want your porridge to be. I like my porridge on the thicker side so I will put around three cups of water for one cup of rice, maybe even four cups, you will just go ahead and cook it and add the water until it becomes the consistency that you are happy with. This uh, rice porridge recipe was inspired by congee, of course. So I'm gonna follow a uh, recipe. I don't have all the ingredients, so it's gonna be slightly adjusted, but I'm gonna use what I have uh, in my pantry. So I'm gonna peel and uh, thinly slice the radish if you have a mandolin that will work great and um, some sugar uh, rice vinegar but you can use any vinegar that you have salt and some turmeric for color 40 minutes later my porridge is ready at this point you can also add more water and cook it for a little bit longer if you want it on the thinner side in a separate pan i will heat up equal amounts of vinegar and water in this case half a cup of vinegar and half a cup of water and one tablespoon of sugar one small teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of turmeric bring it to a boil to break down all the sugar you can remove it from the heat place in your thinly sliced radishes and bring it down to cool to room temperature after you've cooled it down to room temperature you can put it in a, a container that's very sealed because it smells like farts good luck over to the good smelling stuff. Our pork smells delicious and it's nice and tender and falling apart. So we can start putting together our rice porridge. I have quite a bit of it in my bowl, topping it up with some of that pulled pork. And we're adding those smelly but delicious radishes for some sourness. And we also had quite a lot of gravy at the bottom of our crock pot. So I'm going to use that to add some extra flavor. I'm adding homemade chili oil, crispy onions and cilantro, but you can top it off with whatever you wish. And this is the meat that's still left. Uh, it's quite a bit of it, so I have to figure out a way of how to incorporate it with all the other ingredients that we have left. <clears throat> so I split the potatoes, smaller ones here for roasting, and the slightly bigger ones I have here in a pot with some water. I will put some salt in it and boil them for 20 minutes, uh, 25 minutes or until they get soft. So this is on. I will clean the cauliflower and cut it into cauliflower steaks and use the remaining parts for just roasted florets. 
I'm sprinkling some vegetable oil on the cauliflower and I'm seasoning only one side with seasoned salt, ground coriander and paprika. I'm gonna season the florets with some paprika and salt only. And I'm gonna put it on the side of our sheets to roast it together. And for the potatoes, I'm just using seasoned salt and oil. I am putting it all together on my baking sheet and I will bake it on 450 degrees for 15 minutes. After which I will take it out, season the other side of the cauliflower and bake it for additional 15 minutes. The potatoes are now cooked as well, so we just drain them and leave them on the side to cool. In the meantime, I chopped some garlic and onion to prepare for our side meal. I'm adding half an onion on hot olive oil. You want the onion quite chunky, so I cut it in half moon shapes. Season it with some salt and roast it for 10 minutes on medium heat. Our onions have begun to get softer so we can add our garlic now and fry it until completely caramelized. This will take 10 to 15 minutes so we can take this time to chop our cabbage. I am using half for today and leaving half for salad. Make sure to wash it well and cut off the hard ends. When you can see the onions are nice and brown, you can add the chopped cabbage. We will season this with salt to help get the moisture out of the cabbage, mix it well together, cover it with a lid and let it cook for 20 minutes. We should be ready to take out our so-called cauliflower steaks out of the oven now and pierce through the potatoes to see if they've been thoroughly cooked. After 20 minutes, the cabbage looks really good to me. I like it a little bit crunchy, so I'm gonna stop the process here. I will season it with one tablespoon of sugar, some cumin and balsamic vinegar. Saute it for five minutes just so we can get some caramelization from the sugar and balsamic vinegar and that's it. We have everything ready now, so I will top up our cauliflower steaks with that delicious pulled pork. The cabbage we just made will go on a side for a little savoriness. We can add some of those roasted potatoes and for some creaminess, avocado on the side. This meal was beautiful to look at, full of nutrients, full of flavor and so inexpensive to make. To make this meal slightly different, I will prepare a salad on the side. I chopped half a bell pepper, half some of those cherry tomatoes and added one avocado together with some olive oil and salt. I also left a piece of that pork so I can cut it in slices and if you remember we had some of our roasted vegetables from before so we can make this into a completely different meal. Remember those potatoes that we boiled? I have a cast iron skillet just warming up here and I will put some butter and oil in it and with the potatoes I'm gonna smash them gently so we can have like a thinner crunchy potato. I added some oil in the cast iron skillet so our butter doesn't burn, put like a large spoonful of butter in there, melt it and add your potatoes. Let them roast on high heat for five to seven minutes until your bottom of the potato becomes all golden and nice and crispy. This now goes in a preheated oven to 450 degrees for 20 minutes. With the remaining pulled pork, I'm gonna put in some barbecue sauce. Mix this in for some extra flavor. If you have cheese, it's great to top it off with some cheese as well before we put it in. We flipped our potatoes and the pulled pork goes on top. And this goes in the oven on 450 degrees or 220 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. If you have cheese on top until your cheese melts and the bottom gets a little crispy. And we gotta have a dip, right? So I'm using the tomatoes, avocados and some garlic to make an avocado slash guacamole slash avocado dip kind of dip. I will chop everything in very small pieces, season it with some lime juice, salt and olive oil. Chop it some more until you get the right consistency. The potatoes are out of the oven and they smell so good guys. This is making me really hungry. I'm gonna make a plate straight away cause my mouth is watering. Honestly, this was one of the best things I've ever made. You definitely have to try it. 
After that lunch, we're gonna need a lighter dinner. So I'm gonna make a salad from our remaining vegetables as the base. I'm using the crunchy red cabbage. I also grated some carrots, chopped some of that fresh beetroot, and we'll layer it all together with some cherry tomatoes, avocados, and we still have some of that uh, pickled radish that we made. So I'll add that for some sourness. For some variety and some starchiness, I will add the leftover roasted potatoes and cauliflower. And there you have it, healthy, beautiful salad, very inexpensive to make, done in no time. And that's all folks, we used most of it, but I do still have some things left. Um, so I'm gonna add them to our next week's grocery haul and just to give it like an extra challenge. I'm gonna add only $10 for next week and see what I can find to feed us for another week. See you then.